Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So let's start with the recent controversy over uh, a couple of members getting into it on the member site. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of it. I think those of you who have read the chat have an idea of what was going on. So what has ended up happening is that both of these users have been lifetime banned from the site. It's not something I wanted to do, but my hand was forced due to legal reasons. I'll just leave it at that. Now, I've also disabled private chat. And in the past, I've been asked, do I uh, support people trading with each other? And I've said before, I, I don't really have a problem with that. But because of what's happened here, I want to make it clear that this is not Bullion Direct. This is not a site that is created for people to trade with each other. And I think we've seen from this situation that it has caused some serious problems. So it's very unfortunate that this had to happen. I think in the long run, it's probably going to be positive. So I've unchecked the private chat. Uh, and obviously, I can't stop people from contacting each other. I don't recommend it. I don't publicly publish my identity for uh, a number of reasons, but mainly because uh, silver stackers, in my opinion, are not people who should be sharing their personal identity and their information just because it's likely that they have a certain amount of silver at their house, maybe very little, but they may have some. And, uh, you know, these things can spin out of control. I think we've seen that here. So that's the decision that I made on this. Um, I really felt that that was a decision I had to make. So I hope that nobody feels threatened by that. Uh, but the behavior of these two individuals forced my hand. So we'll just leave it at that. Now, I wanted to talk about this election. Uh, I initially called a landslide for Trump and when I saw the vote count, especially the popular vote count, uh, I thought, well, I was wrong. But now I'm starting to reconsider whether or not I was wrong. Now, the media is being very reluctant to dribble out the last of the results. But you can see here, for example, Nevada was a state that was up for grabs for a long time. Same with Arizona. But we're talking about a very red map here. And another interesting thing about this, I would love to see, this is something that I mentioned to Jennifer when we would drive around and in the smaller communities that we would pass through, we'd see a lot of Trump signs. And, uh, and then, of course, in the cities, you'd see Clinton signs. And the first question I wanted answered was how many of the people who have Clinton signs in their yard work for the government? And I would suspect that there is a frighteningly large number of people who voted for Hillary Clinton that either work for the government or are associated with uh, government revenues. Or then there are the exceptions, the Google, Facebook, Twitter, Silicon Valley government PSYOP operation out of the Bay Area, or the ultra-left uh, Microsoft and uh, Oregon, Portland areas. But you can see here that the vast majority of Oregon went for Trump. Just uh, just the government center here in Salem and Portland. Uh, and then in uh, Washington, we had you know the Seattle area and Microsoft and the rest of them. Uh, then, of course, we have the government seaboard over here. And I recently read an article about real estate prices in uh, the D.C. area, which really never even corrected. And, uh, and that's because the level of pay in government jobs has now so ridiculously exceeded the amount of pay in the private sector that uh, there's no comparison. But you can see the flyover states, and this is a... These are people who are despised by the mainstream media and the Obama administration, etc., the House, the Senate. The government media complex hates these flyover state people, and they all went for Trump. So I'm going to say I was right. This was a landslide, certainly not a historical landslide. Um, 
So let's look at some of the charts and some of the information coming out after the election because there were some really surprising uh, reactions. So we'll start with the Bitcoin chart. And uh, of course, it's going to be in the CNY because uh, that's the majority. And you can see that Bitcoin is still maintaining that upward trend to try to take out that 5,000, actually it's 5,200 Chinese yuan that's going to be a new high. Uh, so Bitcoin really didn't have a significant reaction to the election. It seems to be more driven by m maybe trade policy or currency policy in China. But I wanted to look at some of the Netdania charts. I actually had to pull uh, a number of uh, windows for these because there's so many markets to analyze. So we're going to start out with a gold silver crossover chart here. And you can see that the reaction uh, in gold and silver is uh, has occurred since the election results came in. So you can see the spike there. That was an election spike. And uh, the, the candlesticks is gold and the line chart is silver. Now, what's so interesting about this is that you can see this goes back to, well, September or so, early September. You can see fairly tight tracking between gold and silver, but a uh, huge move with the election results, and then you can see this gigantic reversal in gold uh, down to a breaking of this gold trend line, really. Whereas silver has pretty much just continued in an uptrend. Uh, it had a spike, not as dramatic of a spike, but now it's mostly recovered. So you can see the difference between these two here. That's going to be the first thing that I would uh, point out has been a market reaction to this election. And that's going to be a divergence between gold and silver prices with silver taking the lead that's going to be a compression of the gold-silver ratio. Very, very interesting. What does it mean? I have no idea. I haven't figured out what all these things mean. And related to that, let's jump over real quick before we do the rest of the Netdania charts here. Let's take a look at the copper price. Now, this is a startling jump here. You can see we know with the Glencore stories and how uh, copper was going to take Glencore into bankruptcy, that didn't happen. But uh, this price spike in copper has happened since the election. What does that mean? Does it have something to do with trade policy? Does it have something to do with inflation? Does it have something to do with an economic boom? I... I don't know. I'm just throwing these things out. So I encourage you to share your opinion on what these things mean. So let's look at the next net Dania chart here. This is the US dollar Chinese yuan. And you can see that very, very important area that I've pointed out in the past is that old, old resistance area back here that was established during the financial crisis uh, where the uh, depreciation of the dollar versus the Chinese currency kind of flatlined when the crisis happened. Now, we've had a break right up to that area and a testing of that area. Um, what's going to happen? I, I can't say for sure. Uh, now, I want to look at some other currencies here because there are a lot of other currencies that are being affected by this. Uh, we have some news coming out of India with the Indian rupee, but you can see on a long-term chart, really that's just kind of noise. If you remember the stories coming out of India, we had the government for the longest time fighting against gold, but then India ended up electing a sort of outside conservative candidate, and they stopped fighting against the gold price. Now that has recently kind of resumed. So let's take a look at the Mexican peso. Now this is really important because uh, when we had the Podesta information coming out, we had 
this new high in the value of the dollar versus the peso. In other words, the peso was collapsing in value. Uh, we're talking um, 12 to 1 versus 20 to 1. And let's go back to the weekly here and pull it all the way out. Uh, back uh, during the 90s, it was 8 to 1 peso to the dollar. Now we're all the way up at 20. So you can see that the peso made a quick reversal as soon as the election results were fairly well known. Uh, it dropped on the Podesta, uh, or, I'm sorry, the, the lack of FBI uh, prosecution of Hillary. This is it, right in this area here. And then when the election results started to come in, you can see that the peso weakened seriously. So what is this portent? Well, we just don't know. Is, is Trump that serious about building a wall? And does the office of the president have the power to do such a thing? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Again, I uh, welcome comments on that. But clearly, the peso reaction is that uh, the Mexican currency is going to get much weaker. Now, just as an anecdotal thing, we know, most of us who know, and nothing against Mexicans, because uh, let me say, personally, I know a lot of Mexican workers, and, and these are some of the hardest workers I've ever met in my life. And a lot of them are people who spend maybe six months out of the year up here, and they go and live like kings in Mexico. But they work very, very hard. But a large percentage of Mexican workers in the United States send the currency into Mexico. They send their money south. So how does this impact those money flows? Uh, I don't know. Again, I'm interested in your comments. Another chart here. This is the chart of Deutsche Bank. Now, I mentioned before that I thought that we were putting in a bottom when I saw this volume spike here in Deutsche Bank. And you can see here the last two days we've had a significant breakout. Uh, this is the US uh, ADR of Deutsche Bank, but you see the same thing on the uh, European chart. And you can see here clearly not only a rally from this spike low, but actually a breakout from this point here and a challenge of all this resistance. So Deutsche Bank is in a rally mode. What does that mean? Uh, that goes into things like uh, the statements that Rob Kirby has made about, or I'm sorry, uh, Jim Willie has made about Germany warming up to Russia. We know that the election of Donald Trump was probably the most warmly welcomed of anyone by Vladimir Putin. Why would that be the case? Well, it may be that this is indicating an acceptance of Germany being allowed to warm up to Russia, allowing that trade to go forward, a weakening of NATO. We just don't know. There are so many things changing so fast here. So the last chart I want to pull up here, and I think this is probably the most important chart that we're talking about here. This is a uh, paint shop that I did so I could draw in the trend line of the more free research uh, chart, which goes back to the 1980s, the beginning of the uh, bull market in bonds. And this is the 10-year note, but we see something similar on the 30-year bond. And you can see here, we're right here testing this very important trend line. Now, there's many ways you can draw this trend line in uh, because it goes. this is a 30-year bull market. But we're seeing a dramatic move here. And you can see the close is down around 127.80. The low was 127.095, a close near the lows. And this is indicating that we may actually begin to see a bear market in bond prices. In other words, finally a reversal of interest rates. And that's going to be a major, major change as well. 
Uh, so we have a lot of these markets indicating a reversal and uh, this is all a reaction to Donald Trump's election. Now, the last one I want to show you is the Dow 30 and we know that the stocks did a very, very strange reversal when the election news was finalized. It, it was it was not finalized at the time most people think because there was a uh, percentage poll determination where they said it was a 95% chance that Trump would win the nomination. Now at that point, let's get closer in here on the Dow. Uh, unfortunately, NetDania doesn't give you the futures, but uh, the price actually fell much lower than what we show here. We actually had a 750 point decline on the Dow when it first became known that Trump was going to win. And we're talking about something like this. And that was quickly reversed and we've had a rally ever since. And you can see that's into new highs. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean money printing? Does that mean, uh, a pro Wall Street stance. We know that Trump has talked about repealing Dodd Frank. Um, we've also heard rumors that that Trump is talking about uh, slating Jamie Dimon as Treasury Secretary. So, for whatever reason, Wall Street has now resumed this bull market with authority. Uh, it's taken a very long time to resume this trend, you can see that the technical breakout of the top that was made in 2015 right there uh, was tested. But with this election, there's a decisive breakout to the upside. So stocks are rising, bonds are falling, silver is rising, gold is falling, copper is rising, and there are so many other markets, I can't cover them. So there's a lot happening right now. It's going to take me a long time to try to figure out what the implications of all of these things are, but there's definitely changes happening quickly. I think that uh, this this Trump landslide, surprise landslide, it wasn't a surprise to me, but a surprise to everyone else is going to really mean significant changes in markets, and we'll talk to you next time.